All right, so we are Ken and Lisa <laughs> Lane in the studio. Uh, we record this segment each week. This is your, these are your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about out in the yard? And lots of gardening going on, lots of erosion control, lots of things being flushed away because lots of rain. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah. Always good to be here. So your gardens are looking pretty fabulous. They are fabulous. Yeah. Nothing beats rain. Yeah. Just Mother Nature in rain. Yeah. Right. Except the for the, the the sofa cushions. <laughs> yeah. They're not so pleasant in the rain. I had to, no. We had yeah. a party this weekend and I had to get the cushions out where they're starting to drain. I'll keep them under the bed, out, out, away from the rain, just so they're dry. <laughs> Put them out right before people come in because mm -hmm. rain can show up well, anytime, anytime right now. Yeah, it's great. We, had a, we had a humdinger at the garden center oh. last week and yeah, lots of dirt everywhere. What was it like three three inches at a time? Three inches one day, three inches yeah. the next day. I don't know how many inches. For the it was whole a lot because the drains couldn't keep couldn't up keep with up it. with it. No. Of course, you see that all over town. You'll see. Oh yeah, there's dirt it's spilled. There's dirt coming across. <laughs> Every street's got that. Yeah. So talking to a buddy of mine, he he lives up in the Prescott Valley area, and then he hauls some water, so he's mm -hmm. on the dirt road, and uh, he's gonna. I think I'll hold off on having the water company fill my tanks because uh, they'll get stuck. They won't be able to get out of here. It's so wow. washed out and muddy. Yeah. It's exciting. It we'll is take exciting. It. We'll take it. Yeah. And it's true. So garden questions. So what do we got? you bet. So all those rains bring weeds. Oh, I was thinking bugs. I was thinking grasshoppers. <laughs> but okay, weeds. Yeah. But weeds. Flowers. So John wants to know when, when you're ready to spray your weeds, yeah. is it better to cut them back? before okay. you spray or do you leave them the height they are and then spray yeah that's actually a pretty good question pretty pretty that's one often um so so the weeds have a matching root underneath them and so the goal is to spray your weed killers on that foliage mass so that it has more foliage to take in to kill that entire root structure if you cut them back it will stunt them and make them it'll it'll hurt them but it may or may not kill the entire weeds. Mm -hmm. And so more of the annual weeds, yeah, you could probably do that, but more of the perennial weeds, don't do that to a, a whorehound because there's not enough foliage to take in enough because their roots are kind of like a carrot. Mm -hmm. You want to kill the whole thing. So more foliage is better for weed killers. So I would suggest don't cut them back or if you do cut them at the highest setting, so you got more foliage, the more foliage you have, the better the weed killers can go through that entire structure of that plant mm -hmm. and kill the entire root mass. So don't cut them back. Right, because the, the weed killers that you wanna use are not sterilizing the ground. No. They're yeah, actually working, right. the plant pulls it in through the foliage down into the roots right. and kills it out. Yeah, so we've got three basic kinds of root of, of weed killers here at Waters Garden Center. We've got the, the um, indiscriminate weed killer it kills all kinds of weeds uh, whether it's a grass or it's a a dandelion whatever it is uh, rosemary it'll kill them all mm -hmm. if you spray it it'll kill them but it doesn't affect the soil mm -hmm. and that was one the more foliage you have to take in this material the better it is at right. obliterating the entire root structure then we've got broadleaf weed killers mm -hmm. we don't sell as many of those uh, but but it's mainly in a lawn Mm -hmm. It kills everything but grass. Right. Um, so, so you use it mainly for lawns for dandelions. I guess it could be good for those folks out, let's see, in the valley areas where you want more of that native blue grama, uh, buffalo grass coming up. Mm -hmm. You don't want to kill that, but you want to get rid of all the, the, the goat heads, goat head, all that other nasty thistles. native weeds. Yeah. So you come up with the native grass. You could work it that way. So you got uh, broad weed killer it kills everything kind of like a roundup we saw mm -hmm. one that's called decimate it's better than roundup it kills has a broader range of weed killers than roundup uh, and it doesn't have the cancer causing mm -hmm. the carcinogens that roundup does the broad leaves and then you've got soil sterilants these are dangerous so um, uh, they kill everything in the soil and they keep things from growing in the soil for up to a year i find it goes about six eight nine months and then it starts to come back but it kills your trees it kills the weeds it kills every it kill nothing can grow in that soil for a while yeah. the negative is people make a mistake they they sport underneath their peach tree or their cherry tree 
and it kills the weeds really well. And then it also, you know, <laughs> kills the tree. Three months later, it killed the tree. You're like, what happened uh, to my tree? Yeah. So it's yeah. made mainly for fence lines, driveways. Mm -hmm. We use it here in the patios, those pavers, you know, weeds coming up in between the cracks. Mm -hmm. Really good using it there. But I would not use it out in the garden. So those are the basic three ones. Okay. So anyway, All right. more okay. foliage better. Going Got back it. To <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <Think> too deep. <laughs> well, Sandy would like to know, she usually sees honeysuckle grow up, in, uh, up on fences yeah. and trellises. She wants to know, can she use it as a ground cover? And is, is it a good erosion control? Yeah. As a ground cover. It's probably great question. So you do see it softening up all those fence lines, especially the smaller yards. You got those uh, block fences. It softens that up. It grows up to the top of the fence, then goes another two, three feet, and then starts spilling over. So it's, it's a great one for that. But it's also one of the number one selling ground covers. Mm -hmm. So honeysuckle, all the colors. Hall's honeysuckle or japonica is the number one seller. That's your classic. That's when, as a kid, you grew up with this yellow to white flower, used to pull the stamens out, suck the nectar, it's just really sweet. Uh, hummingbirds love it, mm -hmm. but it comes in a broad, lots of reds and pinks and lemonades and, and your classic yellows. They're all good for climbing up, but they're also all good for climbing over rock walls and down, down that uh, rock bank or beside a driveway. And the beauty with honeysuckle, is animals don't bother them. Mm -hmm. They're very deep rooted, so that's why they hold the the soil in so well. Um, they they they're just drought hardy, so they're very robust, uh, and you can count on them to bloom from midsummer right on through. They're just good plants for the mountains of Arizona. Now they don't root in, right? It's it's the original plant where you planted it spreads out. It doesn't send suckers and root in and, and it, it can if it's if it's happy enough it can have a if where that long stem grows and then touches the ground it can actually start to form a new plant over there three four feet away okay. but basically you're planting them in a zigzag pattern let's say you're doing a erosion control on a hillside mm -hmm. which sounds like they might be going right. that direction come take a picture get a measurement we can help you figure out how many you need mm -hmm. we just kind of zipper or, or triangular pattern across that. And we'd, we'd probably, with a, with a honeysuckle, place them at every six to eight feet. Mm -hmm. And then it would quickly, probably by the end of this year, so it right. would hold that hillside in yeah. pretty quickly. Okay, good to know. All right, Pam is moving into a home late in September, new home. Awesome. They want to put in maples and aspen, but they want to know, is it too late by the end of oh, September no, no. to be putting those in? Well, first of all, Pam, Welcome to God's country. You're all are welcome. But once you're in, then you can start berating Californians or, or <laughs> the Midwesterners or people from New York or Florida. So but once you're one of us, you're you're go you're golden. So welcome to God's country. I'm just kidding. So I'm just offended like half the audience here. Yeah, nobody's coming back. <laughs> We're lost, never shopping at Waters Garden Center. Not tuning into the show again. <laughs> anyway, oh fall, if you're from the Midwest, she didn't say where she's from, but nope. um I would say fall is for planting, autumn is for planting. So now through, I'd say Thanksgiving or so, mm -hmm. is just the peak time. In fact, we'll start shipping in a lot of evergreens, aspens, maples, mm -hmm. so that they can be planted. In fact, the most popular time is when they start to go in that, that classic red or gold colors, because mm -hmm. people drive by and they go, oh, Ooh, what is that? What is it? I want that. Where, how do I get one of those? Can I have it now? And so we're, we're front loading. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's such a good time, plants, trees, big plants will continue to root through the end of the year. And so you'll get better growth next spring by planting right now. And, and the ground is moist. It's easy to dig. I mean, just it's just the perfect time. Yeah, go for it. Um, I would say you're, you're good to go. Here's the insider tip. If you're planting now in the fall, which is a good time, we don't get cold like they do in like Wisconsin, an eight foot frost line. Thank we heavens. get cold, but the plants continue to grow. They mm -hmm. continue to use water. So you'll need to water that new tree. You know, typically people turn their irrigation off about November. You'll need to continue watering that mm -hmm. tree about twice a month, right yeah. through winter, because plants are still using it. So yeah, we're mild, but we're not truly cold. It's like a unique thing here. You need to continue watering through winter. If you do that, you have great 
great success right. next spring. That tree will double in size. Oh, out of time. My goodness. <laughs> hey, Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back after this.